And if the Lord's your Lord, uh, you know what she's talking about, singing about. Why don't you turn your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 20. I'd like to read some scripture this morning that's uh, always been kind of scary to me as I read it. And even though I know that I'll never have to face this because I'm saved, it still puts a scare. There's a lot of, I don't know if you're like me, but there's a lot of places in the Bible that when I read them, there's just... Now, everybody get quiet now, listen. It kind of scares you. And the Bible is a book that parts of it ought to scare us. Person smart that trembles at the Word of God. Let me tell you something, friend. We're living in a day when people think, I can do anything I want. To anybody I want, as long as I want, and I don't have to worry about it. You're in for a shock. God's still a looking. He's still a looking. And just because you may temporarily get by does not mean it's over yet. Now I'm going to read you about that great day, that terrible day, that's going to be the most terrible day for the world it's ever been. And title the message this morning, The Great Judgment Day. There's going to be a great judgment day coming one of these days. And the Lord is going to set the score. He's going to even the odds. He's going to make the books clean. The Lord's going to do it. You can tell a young person nowadays, when you're talking to young people, and I I talk to them all the time, and I'll say, all right now, you boys, one of these days, they'll say, boy, I don't like girls. And I say, yeah, one of these days, you're going to get married. Not me, I'll never, I hate girls. I don't, every one of them gets married. Every one of them. And if they don't, it's usually because there's something wrong with them. Or else they can't find nobody to have them. Or, maybe God just got something special for them. I don't mean you have to be in one of those categories. Maybe you're smart. Somebody said, well, I ain't going to say that. Um, uh, I believe I will too. They said, all men are born free. Some choose to marry. But anyway, uh, you can tell them, you say, you're going to get married. No, not me. You watch and see what day's going to come. Here they'll come down the aisle. Thought you wasn't ever going to get married. Well, she's different. <laughs> see, and you can, tell, you can tell these kids right here. You can tell these kids right here this morning. One of these days you're going to be out of high school. They don't believe you. They don't believe you. They think it's always going to be like it is now. Now look, just as sure... As I can tell you, you're, you'll probably get married, and then you do. And just as sure I can tell you, you're going to grow up, and you will, or die one. And just as sure as I can tell you things going to happen, you say, I don't know about that, preacher. I'm telling you something that's going to happen. You are going to stand before God and be judged. You. The people sitting right here in this church will one day stand in front of God. Now you think about being in outer space with nothing under you, nothing on each side of you, and 20 million miles of nothing below your feet, suspended in midair, sitting in, standing in front of a great big white throne with somebody sitting on that throne who is so bright that the earth and heaven run from his face and looks right straight down at you and knows everything you've ever done and every place you've ever been and every word you've ever said, it's something to be scared about. Let's read about it here in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Please, mamas, help me as much as you can. We need it quiet. There's a lot of people in here, and I want to be sure of those that are not saved to be able to hear this morning. 
Revelation 20. The rest of you with the croup, take a haul or a hack. And I saw a great white throne, verse 11, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, note that, stand before God, small and great. That means movie stars, and that means people who are broke. That means Joe Namath, that means Brooke Shields, that means Burt Reynolds and Dolly and Randy Travis. And Tiffany. And everybody in Def Leppard. That's what it means. That means Dukakis. That means Gorbachev. That means Hitler. And Mussolini. And Billy the Kid. And Machine Gun Kelly. That means Walter Cronkite and Fred Kirby and Uncle Jim and every one of everybody, everybody stands before God. You ain't going to get away. You ain't going to get away. Barbara Walters and Mike McKay in his adulterous affair. And Stevie Wonder is going to see him. And Cassius Clay. And Mike Tyson and Spink or Spinks and Tyson and Stinks or whoever they are. Every one of them dudes gonna stand before God. That means everybody in Marion. That means everybody in, in, in Glenwood. That means everybody in Nebo. That means everybody in South Carolina. Nobody gets by. You either get saved and stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Or stay in your sin and stand before this judgment that I'm reading about this morning. You don't know what's going to happen? The books were open. And another book was open. Which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. As I described the judgment day this morning, it's hard for a lot of people to believe that this day is actually coming. The day in which you'll stand as a lost person before the great judgment throne of God, just before eternity begins, is this awful, dreadful, woeful day. You talk about a terrible day, it's going to be terrible. You talk about people screaming and weeping and wailing, it's going to be the most horrible day that's ever been. You'll notice, first of all, in this scripture, that there's a judge. You can't have a judgment without a judge. I've been in the courtroom with people, and you're sitting there, and all of a sudden, you know, people just kind of whispering around and talking, and all of a sudden, everything gets real quiet. And this guy steps out of the side room, and he goes, uh, Hear ye, hear now, hear now, and all ye honorable and court of the United States and this and that and the other. And he rattles off there for a minute and everybody gets quiet and they stand and the judge walks in. When that judge walks in, he's got on this long black robe and walks in, there's a sense of awe comes over that courtroom. A sense of respect. There's the man in charge. There's the judge. Boy, you see people say, boy, that man, they may not like that man, but they know that man has authority. They may not agree with that man, but they know that's the man that has the power to put them behind bars or set them free. Yes, sir, there's, there's the judge. 
And brother, you think about this judgment that I'm talking about this morning. The judge is Almighty God. Almighty God is the judge. You think about God Himself sitting behind a great big white throne. And all the people of all the ages gathered before Him. Gathered together to stand to hear their record given and their sentence pronounced. In the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 30, the Bible said, God hath appointed a day in which He will judge the world. You see, the Lord loves you this morning and wants to be your Savior. If you refuse to let Him be your Savior, He will someday be your judge. You've heard that story of that man who was out in the lake drowning. And a, and a man uh, came by and saw him. And the man was going down for the last time. So the man jerked off his coat and dove in the water and saved the drowning man and pulled him out and got him revived. And that man said, I thank you, I thank you. I can never do enough to repay you. And that man said, don't worry about it. And going up, went on. Wasn't long until that man who had nearly drowned got in trouble with the law and was hauled into court. And lo and behold, he looked over and there sitting behind the judge's desk was the man who had saved his life over there when he had nearly drowned. And he went up and pled his case after they had given his court case and of course he was guilty. And he come before him and he said, Listen, don't you remember me? Look at me. I'm the man that you pulled out of the water back then. I'm the fellow that was drowning and, and, you, and you got me. Don't you remember me? Now you can help me again. And the judge looked back at that man and said, Sir, what you don't understand is this. That day when you were going down in the lake, I was your Savior. Today, I'm not your Savior. I'm your judge. And I just judge the facts based on what they present to me and you'll serve your sentence. Now, I want to tell you, there's a lot of people think that they're going to live any way they want to live because God loves them now. And then they're going to go before the judgment and say, God, God, I'm sorry. God, please, please, God, don't throw me in hell. And God will say, well, all right, I'll have mercy on you. But God will look at you and He'll say, listen, that morning down there at New Man of Baptist Church, I was your Savior. All you'd have had to do is come down to that altar and get saved. I'd have gladly reached down and picked you up. I would have gladly changed your life. I would have gladly washed your sins away. But today, I'm not your Savior. I'm your judge. And that's what's coming according to this Bible. The Bible said that those who've never been born again will someday stand before God. And a man that's never been born again will someday wish he had never been born the first time when he stands before God. And you'd have said, I wish I'd have never come into this world. The second thing I want you to notice is those who will be judged. The Bible said the small and the great. That means they might have gone to church. They might have been good citizens. But they've never took Jesus Christ into their heart. One time there's a fine upstanding man in the community died. And everybody knows he's in the community, but he's wicked and wasn't saved. And the preacher got up and tried to preach him into heaven. And got up and said some nice words and said this. He said, I'm sure heaven was glad to receive him. Any city would be glad to have him in its midst. But according to the Bible, I read you about a city this morning who does not have those who are not saved in its gates. I read you about a city in the Bible this morning who will not allow a man to be into that city just because he's got money. I read you about a city this morning who will not open its doors just because somebody has been Miss America or because they're beautiful, or have a lot of money, or fame, or fortune. I'm telling you this morning, the day's going to come when we'll all be reduced to nothing. You know, me and, me and Carrie was going uh, uh, to eat yesterday, and we was talking, and somehow or another, uh, she's talking about movie stars and people like that, and she said, you know, Daddy, it's hard to imagine that Madonna 
lives in a house. She said, it's hard to imagine. She just comes home like everybody else and goes in a house. And I said, yeah, it is. And I said, honey, the reason it's that way is because we have allowed television to make these people just so big in our eyes that it's hard to imagine that they're just like us. Their breath stinks every morning when they wake up. They ain't no different than us. Really. Can you imagine Farrah Fawcett's breath of the morning? They're human beings just like us. Listen, folks. We have got the idea that, oh, these great people, these are, according to God, they ain't nobody, no better, nobody, no bigger than nobody else. With God, we're just all a bunch of sinners, saved by grace or condemned to hell. I was preaching over in the prison, over at Craggy Prison. Boy, I got to preaching. And I, I get on them people like that, you know, and I do it not to try to be mean, but I do it to shock people into the reality that everybody's made out of the same stuff. And boy, I was talking on there, you know, and I said, this movie star's going down, you know, and this one's going to be judged, and that one's going to be judged. And them guys just sitting there like, I ain't never thought of nothing like that before. And there's a bunch of old black boys sitting on the back row, and there's a eating it up. And they said, yeah, you preach it, brother. Yeah, you know, like that, you know. And man, I enjoy preaching them, boy. I tell you, I enjoy it. I mean, you ain't never. I mean, you get in an all-black church, you preach yourself to death and have a heart attack. Really? I mean, boy, you say, uh, the Lord come. Mm-hmm. Yes! And boy, I mean, it's blessing, man. I love it. And boy, we got to going on there and we was having a time. And I started talking, and I started talking about movie stars and baseball players. And everybody, and I said, they're going to the ground and they're going to rot. And worms is going to eat them. And their maggots are going to eat them. And I said, I said, uh, uh, Brooke Chills. And I said, uh, some baseball player. And I said, this is a lousy. Woo. Yeah. I you know, like that, you know. And boy, I said, and I said, and Tina Turner. And when I said Tina Turner, this one old black guy, remember him? He's on the front, front row. And I said, Tina, worms is going to eat Tina. Worms is going to eat her. And this old black boy in the front row said, no, not Tina. No, not Tina. I said, I said, yeah, Tina. He just could not believe that worms is going to eat Tina Turner. I mean, he just never, it never dawned on him that we're all made out of the same stuff. You know what the Bible said? Did you hear me? Did you know what this book said? It said the small and the great. Buddy, there's a lot of big, big, big shots. We was over at Mom's the other day and they had this thing on cable TV. The, ri- the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Oh, Lord. It was pitiful. I mean, you know, these exotic places they travel and spend a week in here in Paradise Island and going here and going there. And you know what the book said? Everyone going to come down. Stand right in front of God. There's been some of them. You know what they, they said? Let me tell you what some great people have said they want on their tombstone. Danny Thomas. Make room for Daddy. Joan Rivers. On her tombstone says, or wants, wait, can we talk? And what Joan Rivers is saying is, now, now when it comes to now wait a minute, let's don't die now. Let's talk about this thing. Listen, Joan Rivers will someday stand before God Almighty and God Almighty will look down and her, her epitaph will be, can we talk? Let's talk about this thing now, Lord. Take it easy. He'll say, Joan, you had all them years to talk. You had all them years to respond. You had all them years to live right. Now you hush, I'll do the talking now. Loretta Lynn said, wake me when it's all over. And that's just exactly what God's going to do. Except her soul won't sleep. Her soul will be in heaven or hell depending on what she's done with Jesus Christ. Those who will be judged. The sea will give up the dead. 
the bones from all those people that went down on the Titanic will come back, reassemble, God will put them back together and stand them right before Him to be judged. Those who are guilty of the worst crimes in the world, those who were in Pearl Harbor in 1941, 1,104 Americans lost their lives and were drowned. They'll ever one come up. When a lost man dies, his soul goes to hell. Here his body will be raised, reunited with his soul, and stand before God. You see, if you died right now and you're not saved, your soul leaves your body and it goes to hell. Your body goes out here in the ground somewhere and we stick you in a hole in the ground and cover you up. You stay in hell until the great judgment day and at the great judgment day, God brings your soul out of hell, brings your body out of the grave, puts you back together, gives you an eternal body that will never burn up and then sentences you to the lake of fire forever and ever and ever and ever. It's like this. If you die right now and you're not saved, you go to hell. See, hell is like the jail. If you go out here on the street and shoot a man right now, what's the first thing they'll do? They'll take you up here to the jail, right up here uptown. You stay there in that jail until you stand before the judge. Then the judge sentences you. Then where do you go? Penitentiary. Now, hell is God's jailhouse. The lake of fire is God's penitentiary. When you die, you go immediately to the jailhouse before you ever judged. Then on judgment day, you come out and stand before the judge, and the judge sentences you to the lake of fire. That's the penitentiary. And the judge looks down and he says, Is this person a Christian? Have you ever received Christ as your Savior? And they say, No. I had chance after chance after chance. I went and heard that boy down there on East Court Street preach, and I thought he was crazy. And he told me to come and come to the altar and get saved, but I wouldn't. And the judge says, All right, life in prison for the murder of the Son of God. Those who will be judged. You get to hear when a preacher preaches a long sermon. You think of standing up there with billions of people waiting your turn. Third, the record by which you'll be judged. See, the Bible said the books were open. See, their fate has already been decided. You're not judged on judgment day to determine whether you go to heaven or hell. That's already determined before you leave here. You are judged as to determine your punishment in eternity. The degree of your suffering. The greatness of your damnation. Sins that you forgot about committing will rise up to condemn you. You know, sometimes when a police gets a suspect and they take them into a room, they'll plant little microphones or something in there and bring them in there and question them. Then later on, when that suspect changes his story in court, well, did this happen that way? No, no, I, I've never seen that. The police say, what? Wait just a minute. You said such and such in the room when we was interviewing you. No, I did not. It was the other way. And the, and the policeman says, okay, Your Honor, I have the tape. And he plays the recording. And the guy has nothing to say. In the courtroom, it's so-and-so versus so-and-so. So-and-so versus the state. So-and-so versus the state of North Carolina. So-and-so versus the district court of Mary, North Carolina. In this case, it'll be you versus God. You against God. Your word against His. But now listen, I, you just don't understand, Lord. I, I, I was busy down there, and I meant to go to church, and God, I've done a lot of good things. The Lord will say, save it. We got the tape. Turn on the tape. And how would you like for somebody to 
I mean, just in this congregation right here, I'll tell you what I would. Me to pull down that screen right there, all these rocks, and set up a tape, uh, a movie projector back there, and show your life in front of this crowd right here this morning. You'd crawl out of here on your hands and knees in shame. You'd leave McDowell County, and I would too. You'd be so ashamed. Now, folks, you think you might think it's a joke. Buddy, you talk about scary. You think about God revealing everything you've ever done right in front of the whole world in creation. Serious business. Oh, no, God, not that here. Please, adultery. Drinking, lying, stealing, everything will come out. You say, I must have been crazy. Why did I do that? And the Lord will say, you had chance after chance after chance after chance to be saved and refused. Next, I want to say the outcome of this judgment. The Bible said in verse 15, they'll be cast into the lake of fire. You say, what's the lake of fire in the Bible? The nearest thing in the Bible that I can find to be compared to the lake of fire would be the sun. That's the nearest thing we got as a picture of a lake of fire, the sun. We cannot imagine the horror, the suffering of no hope. Bible said they'll be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Listen, the craziest thing a person could do would be to live day after day after day knowing they're not saved. And they could go to a place like that. Man, if I was you this morning and I wasn't saved, I'd just come up here and say, "What? tell me, what have I got to do? I don't care who looks at me. I don't care who in Marion talks about it. What's Marion? Big deal. I don't want my soul to burn in hell forever and ever and ever. Now, Brother Danny, I just don't know if I believe in that hell. Well, listen, you're taking a chance that no gambler in Las Vegas would take. You're gambling your soul against a book that was written 2,000 years before you was ever born and predicts the future and gets it right every time. And you're going to trust your little peewee brain against this book? That's a foolish thing to do. The fearful, the unbelieving, a place where God's love never reaches. No sleep, no rest, no hope, no water, no gospel, no Savior. They laughed in the days of Noah, but judgment come. They laughed in the days of Lot, but the fire fell. They're laughing now at this message. But one day, God is going to have His say on the judgment day. If I was you here this morning, I'd think about the words of that old song. It may not be exactly doctrinally correct or anything like that, but there used to be an old song the old folks used to sing, and it's called The Great Judgment Morning. And it went something like this. I dreamed that the great judgment morning had dawned and the trumpet had blown. I dreamed that the nations had gathered to judgment before the white throne. From the throne came a bright shining angel and stood on the land and the sea and swore with his hand raised to heaven that time no longer was be. And oh, what a weeping and wailing As the lost were told of their fate, they cried for the rocks and the mountains. They prayed, but their prayer was too late. The rich man was there, but his money had melted and vanished away. A pauper he stood at the judgment. His debts were too heavy to pay. The great man was there, but his greatness, when death came, was left far behind. The angel that opened the records... Not a trace of his greatness could find. And oh, what a weeping and wailing as the lost were told of their fate. They cried for the rocks and the mountains. They prayed, but their prayer was too late. 
The widow was there with the orphans. God heard and remembered their cries. No sorrow in heaven forever. God wiped all the tears from their eyes. The gambler was there and the drunkard and the man that had sold them the drink with the people who gave him the license. Together in hell did they sink. The moral man came to the judgment, but his self-righteous rags would not do. The men who had crucified Jesus had passed off as moral men too. The soul that had put off salvation, no, not tonight, I'll get saved by and by. No, not, not time to think of religion. At last, they had found time to die. And oh, what a weeping and wailing as the lost were told of their fate. They cried for the rocks and the mountains. They prayed, but their prayer was too late. You're not going to bribe that judge. You ain't going to slip him some money under the counter, buy him off, give him a sob story. When that day comes, it is too late. But you know something this morning closing? The good part is, right now, here this morning, it's not too late. The door is open. You can be saved. You better hurry because your time's running out. Let's stand together with our heads bowed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. As they come this morning to get us a song, I want to ask you a question. If you died right now, Do you know you go to heaven? Say, boy, I'll never come back to this church if you get up there and scare me like that. Listen, I love you. And that's why I told you the truth this morning. We love you and we don't want you to go to hell. God loves you this morning. He wants to change your life right here, right now. And if God has spoken to you this morning, you say, Brother Danny... I don't want to stand before that great judgment. I want all my sins washed away. You can come down here and get down on your knees and believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Take Him as your own personal Lord and Savior and you'll never have to stand before that judgment. Why won't you let Him do it? You've been thinking about it. Why don't you do it this morning, will you? We're going to pray. Thank the Lord for this one that's already coming. Maybe others, maybe others need to get out of your seat and come right now. Oh, dear God in heaven, Lord, our prayer goes up for that one of those here this morning who is here and not saved. Please, Lord, let the scales fall from their eyes. Let them see, dear Lord, dear Lord that, that you love them. Please, God, please. Whatever and however you do for us, we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Why would-